Let's talk photo assignments. So today I am putting together my journal and I thought I'd show you what I'm working on. So maybe this would help some of you that are doing your own. If you're not familiar with photo assignments at all, um, I will put all of the links that you need to see below. But basically these are projects that we're going to be doing once every month, once every six weeks, and we'll be doing these through the next year. And these are projects that are designed in an assignment type way to challenge you as a photographer. So the goal in these is to improve creative thinking and your general skills as a photographer photographer. So one of the things that I had put into place with these is I strongly encouraging everybody to keep a notebook or a journal. And so that's what I'm working on today. And I'm going to show you how I'm putting mine together. I'm going to come back to this in a second, but there is a way, uh, you know, when you put your, when you present your work like this printed out, it has a completely different effect than when you're looking at it on a screen. I think you're going to get a lot more out of it. And just to show you some of the details of how I'm working on this, you can make a contact sheet, which I think is the most efficient way to go. And you can do this in Lightroom. You can do it using Bridge or Photoshop or whatever you, you're used to using. So I basically made contact sheets and I did two columns and three rows. And then I took a pair of scissors and cut those up. So that's what you're seeing here. And I'm pasting them into my sketchbook. Now my sketchbook I'm, is not that big. And next time I do this, I'm probably going to go a little smaller on here, but there's enough room in here to write notes. And the way I see it, you know, you can always get another sketchbook um, if you run out of room in this one. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you want them big enough to where you can see them and but still make notes. But anyway, that's what I'm working on now. Pro tip number one, I prefer to use rubber cement and rubber cement as opposed to something like glue or tape. And the main reason is this is probably just an old habit that I've gotten into from mounting work in the old days. But rubber cement, unlike glue, which when it dries is really hard, and if you need to remove an image or you want to move it into another notebook or something, you risk tearing the image or the paper. Same with scotch tape as well. And rubber cement does allow you to pull that up a little bit easier. The other reason I like it is it's really easy to work with. And basically what you want to do is if you go ahead and put rubber cement down in the area that you're going to stick the photograph to and then put it on the back of the image as well. Let it dry just a little bit so it gets a little bit tacky. And then what I do is I place the image on and the cool thing about rubber cement is it does not dry immediately. And if you need to clean it up around the edges, if you have some coming out from under the photograph, it's really easy to clean up because it's just a rubbery texture. And it allows you to actually just move that into place if you're slightly off. And so that's one of the reasons I really like it. So I've been putting these all in my journal today and already I mean it's just really interesting what you're what I start to learn from my own work just already printing it out and some of it is not really good and as I mentioned we're giving ourselves permission to fail it's the only way we're going to learn moving forward and so that's a good thing and that's what you want to see and so I'll share some of that with you I mean first of all some of these images are printed a little on the dark side and you don't need to go for the highest quality, but you do want to be able to see your work. And if I were actually printing these um, to make a print, I would work on them some more to try to make them not so dark. But one thing I'm already seeing though is, you know, when I'm working on my computer, I've got a big iMac with a retina screen and it's like seeing a really big print up close all the time. And when you get further back and you print them smaller, you really start to see that sometimes compositionally they don't hold up as well as you thought they would. This is an older variation I did and I've showed these on the show before, but these are some shots of the moon that I did. And this one in particular, I really liked when I saw it on the computer screen, but even in the video, I mean, you're seeing it teeny tiny. It's just too small in the composition and had a cloud moving in front of the moon. So there's some interesting detail in there. So it needs to either be cropped or I needed to use a longer lens, but that, that's the kind of thing I want to make notes about um, when I'm trying to fill the compositional space, so to speak. And so some of these images, I will, I'm going to sit down tonight and make some notes in here on. Some of them may not need notes. They may be fairly self-explanatory. This was another one. This was uh, my moon shot from last week or two weeks ago when Supermoon was out. And this is one that I thought looked really great on a screen and it's too dark here, but, but actually it's a good thing because you're seeing compositionally it's not really holding strong. This little neon sign down here doesn't work. I thought it wasn't a problem, but when you see it like this, it's not really that great. And also all the elements sit so low in the composition that I'm not really happy with that either. However, the other shot, the vertical I did, um, worked out really well. So it's really interesting to see how you start to perceive your work differently when it is printed out. And like I said, you don't need to get fancy prints for this kind of thing. Uh, you can just use whatever you got or you can send them out or even do it at the grocery store.
Now, I want to talk about the social component to what we're doing here because a lot of you guys have contacted me and said you're ready to start sharing your images. So I want to address that. Before I do, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor today. We're the awesome folks over at Squarespace.com. If you need a website, online store, or even just a landing page to hold your domain, Squarespace have you covered. They have an amazing backend system and you have access to all their award-winning templates, which are all fully customizable. So you can get this to look exactly how you want it with the right colors, the right typeface, the right layout and it really is easy. If you can drag and drop a folder of images and click and drag them around to sort them, you can build an image gallery. And so Squarespace have a free trial. You can head over to squarespace.com and sign up for that. And if you decide it's something that you want to subscribe to, I can save you an additional 10% on checkout if you use offer code AOP. Once again, that is squarespace.com. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the folks at Squarespace for once again sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So in terms of sharing your images socially, several people have already started doing that. And I realized we probably need to get a hashtag or something so there is a way to look at other images that are being posted. So what we're going to do is use the hashtag photo assignments. And so make sure that you tag whatever your social post is with that so other people can go through and see the other images that have been posted as well. So this will work great on Instagram. It'll work great on Twitter. Facebook is a little bit different in how that works. So I would also recommend that you go like the Art of Photography page, which is facebook.com com slash the art of photography. If you go hit the like button on that page, then when you do a post, you can tag the page in your post and you can also tag photo assignments in there too. But it, to tag the page, what you want to do is use the at reply. So you use at and then start writing the art of photography and you'll see the little sub menu pop up and then you'll be able to choose it from there. So we'll go ahead and start sharing our images that way. Um, I mentioned the idea of using Tumblr as well and we will be getting into that. You can use Tumblr, which I recommend because it's free. You can also use WordPress if you want. You can build your own website, whatever you want to do. But to have a place to show what your process is, I think is the important part. Now I mentioned a few people have been sharing their work already and I want to share a couple examples because I'm really impressed with these. So these just came in on Twitter but I thought they were worth sharing with you guys because I really like what people are doing with these. This is Carmen Bianco and he has variations on a grapefruit. And so very simple but some really radically different approaches. This one uses motion and, and slower shutter speeds. This one uses black and white. I love how the grapefruit is carried over onto two images and they're pasted into a notebook. That's exactly what we're looking for on here. And it's the sense of experimentation that I want you guys to be sharing and I think this is really important. Um, another notebook that came in, this is from Ted Patrick and he did a series of self-portraits um, with the theme of alienation for instance and I, this is this is great. I mean I think this is exactly uh, what you guys need to be doing. Another thing I mentioned um, when I did the first video, uh, this is Lewis Henry and I mentioned you know if you don't know what to shoot just pick something that's around you. What's in the room you're in right now? Do 10 variations. They don't have to be great. You're pushing yourself to think and do something different and do something creative and work within the limitations you've got. And this one was a series <laughs> involving a light bulb. And I really like these. Um, one of them that I think was really successful was this one, which I think starts to get a real narrative mood to it when he starts putting a self-portrait into it. Really cool stuff. Um, this is Mike Dodd on, uh, on Twitter who didn't do a notebook per se, but just gave me some images. And these are very variations uh, just with a sky backdrop and these parking lot lights and it works it's great um, I think this is exactly uh, what you guys need to be doing this was a really quirky one that came in that I thought was really cool last night this is from Stephen Wagner and this is just variations with a Mountain Dew bottle but you see the creative process. You see, took the time to think about it. The image on the upper left is lit completely different than the others. And so you're going to find that some of your images are not successful and you're going to find that some of them are, and they're pretty interesting. And I don't know if you guys are catching this or not, but it's also taken to the next level in that this is an image of the Mountain Dew bottle with the images of the Mountain Dew bottles, which I thought was really cool. But anyway, this is awesome work and I'm really glad you guys are enthusiastic about participating in this. So this is a discussion, and so if you have any comments or questions about journals, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest that we do here. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.